Hi you guys, I hope you're all well. So today I would like to talk about what I have not so fondly called the Tasmanian Gender sh Show. Please, please pardon my language, but something quite bad has happened in Tasmania and I don't think most people realize just how bad it could be at this point. So, uh, Tasmania was seeking to make a few changes to its births, deaths and marriages legislation, namely updating the Marriage Act, which currently states that if a person wants to transition, they have to get divorced. So this is a very fair and necessary change to bring Tasmania up to date with federal law, because nowadays, of course, two people of the same sex can get married. However, Labour and the Greens decided to sneak in a few extra amendments on the back of this bill. Believe it or not, Tasmania is on course to become the first Australian state to remove gender from birth certificates. A bill that passed in the lower house last week seeks to make gender an opt-in for new parents, so they will have to literally apply to the Registrar of Births, Deaths and Marriages if they want to record on a birth certificate whether or not their little bundle of joy is a boy or a girl. However, they can leave it blank if they so choose, cause that's never gonna end badly. Our kids, Kaden and Zyler, are three and a half years old and we're raising them using they, them, their gender neutral pronouns so that they can decide for themselves uh, when, if, and how they want to identify as a gender. The bill, if it passes the upper house, also rather insidiously introduces a new set of so-called hate speech laws. Now these are actually much more hazardous than people think because they bring to mind Canada's Bill C-16, which relates to the use of gender pronouns, and we all know how dangerous that can be. So you see that as, am I right in, that you see that as a curtailing of freedom? It's worse than a curtailing of freedom. It's a demand that the population uses a certain kind of linguistic approach. It's, a, it's an appropriation of speech. There's no excuse for that. That never has happened once in the history of English common law, right? It's a barrier that we do not cross. Hate speech laws are bad enough. It's not like there's no hate speech. Like anyone with any sense knows that there's hate speech. Who's gonna regulate it? Who's gonna define it? And I know the answer to that. The last people in the world you would want to. And then we, we cross another barrier and we allow the government to compel speech for some hypothetically compassionate reason? No way. That's a really bad idea. I fully intend to discuss this little bit of casual authoritarianism because I am really, really mad about it. In fact, I am so mad about it that I am going to devote an entire video to it. So keep a lookout for that in the coming days because it will be quite the thing. But what I want to focus on now is that the bill, if it passes, will also alter the law regarding a person's ability to change their gender on their birth certificate. Now the law as it now stands requires you to have had gender reassignment surgery in order to make the change. However, this new legislation specifies that anyone over the age of 16 can apply to change their gender on their birth certificate based purely on how they feel simply by filling out a statutory declaration. And if they're under 16, their parents can do it for them because any parent worth their salt would absolutely indulge the whims of their prepubescent child who just likes to play dress ups, right? To state the bleeding obvious here, we all know the problems that can and will arise if people are allowed to change their gender without any conditions. We know that it means men will be able to make their way into the women's bathroom or change room or spa or any other women's space that has women in various states of undress just because they say they're a woman. It also means that, theoretically, men could be the beneficiaries of quota systems on corporate boards and in other institutions simply by identifying as a woman. Now you'd think that feminists who love quotas would be a little bit upset about this, but apparently they haven't thought it through, because they don't think anything through. We also know it means male prisoners can identify as women in order to get themselves placed in women's facilities. Just ask Karen White, formerly David Thompson, who was imprisoned for multiple rapes. She entered the UK prison system as a transgender woman, however she was still legally a man and had no gender reassignment surgery. Nevertheless, she was eventually placed in a women's facility where over the three months she was there, she proceeded to sexually assault two other female inmates. 
There is, of course, the issue as well of trans women competing in women's sports against biological women. Now, the left can harp on all they like about how hormone therapy reduces testosterone levels, but what hormones don't reduce are muscle mass, muscle fibers, bone density, lung capacity, and the size of the heart, all factors that trans women retain when they compete against biological women. Just ask Tamika Brents, an MMA fighter who was concussed and suffered a broken eye socket after she fought Fallon Fox, who was born a man but competes in women's events. Tamika, who is stronger than your average woman, said that she had never felt so overpowered as she did when she fought Fox in 2015. And sure, trans activists will rage that anyone who raises these concerns is just fear-mongering and that there's no large-scale data to suggest that this is the case. Well, that's because these laws haven't been implemented large-scale anywhere yet and not for long enough. The data has not had time to accumulate. But anyone with even an ounce of critical thinking skill will tell you that it is perfectly reasonable to assume that what I have just outlined, at least to some degree, will be the inevitable byproducts of these kinds of laws. But there is one thing that the trans lobby within Labour and the Greens is trying very hard to mask. Birth certificates don't actually record gender. They record sex. Duh. Birth certificates record biological sex, the one dictated by your DNA, not how you want to be perceived socially. As such, those pushing the Tasmanian legislation have literally had to redefine sex and gender within the bill in order to make it work. Sex is officially defined in the Oxford English Dictionary as... Either of the two main categories, male and female, into which humans and most other living things are divided on the basis of their reproductive functions. Whereas gender is defined as either of the two sexes, male or female, especially when considered with reference to social and cultural factors rather than biological ones. This term is also used to denote a range of identities that do not correspond to established ideas of male and female. However, Gender is defined in the proposed Tasmanian legislation as, and according to the transcript from votes and proceedings from November 20th, gender means the apparent sex of an infant specified by the parent or the gender identity of the person as specified on a gender affirmation declaration. So as you can see there, they have literally said that gender means someone's apparent sex. Gender means sex. There it is in black and white. So if this legislation passes, it means that this redefining of gender will be enshrined into law, despite the fact that all other definitions state explicitly that sex and gender are two different things. And up until very recently, trans activists actually seemed perfectly happy to vehemently push this distinction, until they realized that by braying for years that sex and gender are two totally different concepts, they've actually been shooting themselves in the foot. Since, as I mentioned earlier, birth certificates record biological sex, well that means logically nobody can actually change their birth certificate because you can't change your sex. It is physiologically impossible and totally anti-science to say that you can. Even when a trans person has had all the hormones, all of the cosmetic surgery, because that's ultimately what it is, cosmetic, even when they have lived for years as the gender of their choice, every single chromosome in their bodies is still that of the sex they were born as. You cannot change your sex. Sure, you can cushion it slightly, you can have surgery to make yourself look like the gender you want to live as, which is why that's always been a condition for changing a birth certificate, but it is still a fundamentally flawed argument and people are starting to wise up to it. That is why trans activists have started to conflate the words gender with sex. They are realizing this subconsciously or consciously and want to rectify their mistake. This whole thing harks back to Marxism and communism, where the goal was to destroy the nuclear family and infiltrate people's personal lives and relationships in order to usurp them to make the state their number one allegiance. Attempting to erode traditional gender norms by lobbying the government to change by law the definitions of sex and gender to mean effectively the same thing is a big step, if the bill passes, to doing just that. Radical gender theorists, trans activists, and of course intersectional third wave feminists have made no secret of the fact that they want to destroy gender norms to create what is ultimately a gender fluid or genderless society. 
This kind of legislation is their idea of heaven, especially as they get to mask it as working for the common good by using words like anti-discrimination and equality and human rights, etc, etc. This also allows them to call anyone who disagrees with them a bigot or a homophobe or a transphobe or any other kind of phobia, which immediately causes their opposition to defend their morality before they can even put forward an opposing argument. It is these increasingly large concessions that mainstream society is making that are going to set the groundwork for these activists to make bigger changes to bigger governments. If this bill passes in Tasmania, they will most definitely push it on a federal level, stating plaintively, But it worked in Tasmania, bigot! If Australia adopts it nationally, which we might, then other countries will use us as an example, and on and on and on it will go. It is all the same Marxist agenda under the guise of virtue and progress, designed to dupe the ignorant into striving collectively towards a socialist utopia that has been proven time and time again not to exist. It is all very, very, very worrying, and I haven't even got to the hate speech laws yet. If you liked that video, please remember to like, subscribe, share, leave me a comment, and if you really, really liked it, then why not pledge at my Patreon? The link is in the video description.